Hi, this is Courtney Clark. I'm creating a quick demo video for how to set up your Eventbrite page for your success and service event or your mapping party. The first step you want to take is creating an account on Eventbrite. This will just be a personal account for yourself. Um, if you don't already have one, you can just go right to eventbrite.com and set that up. Once you've done that, go ahead and open up a new tab and you're going to come to this page, eventbritepages.com slash Peace Corps. So Peace Corps actually pays to have a branded page on Eventbrite. Um, and there's several benefits to this. And um, the, the first is that if someone is looking at another Peace Corps event or is just searching for Peace Corps on Eventbrite, they'll be able to see all of the different recruiting events, success and service, and mapping parties. Um, within that search. And so this is great because it will get more eyes on your event. You'll be able to reach a larger audience. The second is that, you know, we have the logo and some custom graphic design that went into the page. And so that will keep all of the branding consistent and make sure people know that they're, you know, really going to a great event um, hosted by someone who works for Peace Corps, which you all do as virtual interns. Um, and then lastly, it allows us to collect all of the email addresses of um, your participants. And so we can continue to follow up with them and engage with them long after your event is finished. So once you get to this page, you're going to go ahead and click this green create an event button. You'll need to allow the Peace Corps brand page to access your Eventbrite account. We're not going to be able to see uh, your password or personal information such as that. We'll just be able to see your event, um, see how many people has, have RSVP'd and, and also capture their email addresses. So you're gonna go ahead and click allow. And once you get to this page, you wanna set up a new event with this theme. And we wanna edit our event details. <clears throat> so here's where you're gonna really uh, put in all of that exciting language and um, marketing that you've come up with around your event. So you'll put in the title, try to think of something, you know, very cool and catchy, uh, the location. Um, it's good to enter the address because once you finally create the event, a little you know map will come up to help people better find your lo the location of your event. Um, I definitely recommend adding an event image. It just makes the page look so much nicer. <clears throat> Obviously, a description is very important so people know what they're attending. Um, you'll want to add uh, your name, and some information about yourself, why you're organizing the event, who you are, you're a virtual intern for the Peace Corps, um, just so people can know who's actually hosting this. Um, and then you'll create your tickets and you can select what type of event you're going to host. <clears throat> I have um, a special request for the OpenStreetMap virtual interns. Um, so apologies, thanks for your patience, success and service interns. So when you create your tickets, uh, for a mapping party, you're actually going to create three different kinds of tickets. Um, they will all be free. And, you, and the first kind that you will create is a new mapper ticket. You want to make the quantity available pretty large. Um, I found that usually about 50% of the people who, who RSVP for an event actually show up. Um, and so definitely you want more people signing up than you have space for because a lot of them just won't show up. Um, so we'll put 500 tickets. And we want to come over here to this little settings gear. We're going to add a little description. So please select this ticket if you are brand new to OpenStreetMap. Don't worry will train you. Okay, we want our ticket sales to start today. So that's perfect. Um, and let's say our event is on March 18th. So that's when we want our ticket sales to end. Um, and then we're going to add another free ticket type. So the next one will be 
experience mapper. Again, we'll have 500 available. And in our settings, you know, we would type something like, please select this ticket type if you are familiar and comfortable editing OpenStreetMap. And then our final ticket, ticket type, excuse me, is going to be a validator. Um, and so these are people that are like expert level uh, mappers who will actually be able to possibly even help you train other people and who will definitely be able to look at the edits that the new mappers are making and provide suggestions, um, either validate or invalidate those edits. And these are really valuable people to have at your event. So are the experienced mappers, which is why it's so nice to have a good idea of how many beginning mappers versus experienced mappers you're going to have. And then when the experienced mappers and the validators check in at your sign-in table, um, you can also sort of ask them or nudge them to you know, find some new mappers to sit by, be available to help them, things like that. It's also just good information for us to have. Um, so thank you in advance for creating those three different ticket types. Really, really helpful. Um, and once you've filled out all this information, uh, you can save or just make your event live. Oops. Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that, but we can, you know, preview it and take... Oh, I guess I need to change this date. <clears throat> Okay, well, sorry about that. Since I didn't fill out the entire form, it's not letting me make the event live, which I guess is a good thing. Good job, Eventbrite. Um, but I can show you a sample of um, other events that I've made in the past, just so you can see um, what sort of the finished product looks like. So let me pull one up here. Okay, so for example, we recently held an event with um, General Assembly, with a, which is a coding school here in Washington, D.C., um, and created an Eventbrite for that. So we can take a look at it. Yours might look slightly different, um, but you get the general picture. Eventbrite does a really good job of making the event look neat and clean and very, very easy for users to sign up for. Um, so the last thing I want to show you is the event dashboard. This is what you can see from the back end um, once you make your event live, and it's how you really manage everything. So here's where you're going to be able to see how many tickets you've sold versus how many are available. You can actually change your event URL to make it custom. So it will give you a URL that is, you know, doesn't make any sense. It's just random letters and numbers. And you can actually come up with your own URL, which is really nice and looks very clean and snappy on marketing materials. Um, you'll be able to see exactly who bought tickets. Um, if you go a little bit deeper into their profiles, you'll be able to see exactly who are those new mappers. You can see um, at this event, we had 20 new mappers and three experienced mappers. And then there's lots and lots of options that you'll want to explore over here on the left-hand side of the page. Um, you don't have to worry about like discount codes or anything like that since all the events are free, um, but the analytics are really interesting. Um, and the, one of the main things to know about is just the check-in. So you'll wanna make sure that part of your um, event includes checking in all of your participants. You can do this on your phone, which is how we usually do things at events, or you can have someone at a registration table with a computer. You can even print out a page if you if you must, but we definitely um, encourage you to just do it on a phone or a computer. And as people come through the door, you check them in, um, and then you'll know exactly who attended the event and who didn't. So. Very easy. Um, Eventbrite's great. Obviously, reach out on Slack um, if you have any additional questions, and we'll be happy to walk you through everything. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.